Suella Braverman. We knew she'd stir a hornet's nest, and she has, and good for her. Yeah, just a bit. I mean, she said a few things that stood out to me, Andrew. She said there has been a misguided dogma of multiculturalism, yeah. and this has caused a massive stir, because I think people confuse things. Because multiculturalism is different from just having a multiracial society yeah. where there are different cultures that That's exist. Right. Yeah. It actually means people living separately yeah. according to their culture yeah. in parallel lives. And that's what she was getting at. And I think people disingenuously, disingenuously took that the wrong way. Yeah. And after the bombings in London in 2005, the then Prime Minister, Tony Blair, said multiculturalism is failing because people are not integrating enough, and they should, there should be more. And he said it again in 2019. And then uh, David Cameron, and uh, then Angela Merkel yeah. in Germany. Yeah. This isn't controversial. Everyone wants a cohesive society. Except the Labour Party, which wants to kick the hell out of the Home Secretary for bravely raising it. Oh, and Sir Elton John. Let's not forget Elton John. Now, I declare an interest here. I think he's a terrific performer. I've seen him perform live. He's fabulous. I couldn't care less what he thinks about the Prime Minister, about the Home Secretary's speech. He likes to tell us, though, doesn't he? Yeah, because he says, as a gay man, I'm a gay man, that actually he's appalled that she says it's simply not enough to be gay and think you may be susceptible to discrimination to get asylum in Britain. And, What's wrong with that? And it's also, she says, she said that uncontrolled immigration poses an existential threat and she's to right. the West. And to this country, People, actually. again, misinterpreting what she said to say that she doesn't want any immigration. And then people go after her because she's an ethnic minority and they yeah. say, you know, how you, can you say How can this? you of all people? The, yeah. the daughter of migrants. Uh, so she's also got the United Nations criticising her. She'll be thrilled about that, she, I would have thought. She will, indeed, yes. What uh, they said. They, well, they've rejected her calls for international law on refugees to be changed. Yeah, so let's have a little reminder of what she actually said yesterday. Where individuals are being persecuted, it is right that we offer sanctuary. But we will not be able to sustain an asylum system if, in effect, simply being gay or a woman or fearful of discrimination in your country of origin is sufficient to qualify for protection. And then she said simply being gay. That's right. Not that anyone who's gay shouldn't be given no. protection. But anyway, let's have a look at some of the reaction to her speech that she's received. Sasha Deshmerk, Chief Executive of Amnesty UK, said the speech was a display of cynicism and xenophobia. John Feetonby is Chief Policy Analyst at the Refugee Council, who said a high bar for fear of persecution must be met for people to be granted protection, and this has not changed. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees <laughs> said the need is not for reform or more restrictive interpretation, but for stronger and more consistent application of the Convention and its underlying principle of responsibility sharing. And ActionAid UK describes Sola Braverman's comments as a direct affront, dear me, a direct affront to gender equality and human rights. But the most high-profile criticism, as we mentioned, came from <laughs> rock star Sir Elton John. The singer said the Home Secretary risked further legitimising hate and violence against LGBT plus people after she called for the definition of who qualifies for protection under the refugee rules to be tightened. Is that what she was saying? She's basically saying, if you're, she also said, but people cu have cut this out of the criticism, if you're gay and a woman, mm. And, and you, there is a perception you may be discriminated against. That isn't an automatic right to um, have asylum or citizenship in this country. I think she's absolutely right. Why don't we ask Richard Tice what he thinks? Why don't um, we? He's joined us. He's, he's joined us in more ways than why. Uh, indeed, Richard. absolutely. A very good morning to you. Well, I covered it uh, last night at length yeah. on my show, Standing In For Nigel. Yeah. But I think actually the country owes Sorella Braverman a right, significant right. debt of thanks. I agree with you. She has made a speech as Home Secretary you could not imagine any Home Secretary making just three or four years ago. Yeah. And all of the stuff you've just been mentioning, it's all noise in the background of the key thrust of the speech, which is that this UN 51 convention yeah. is a 70-year-old convention yeah. that is basically no longer fit for purpose for the modern times. And it requires updating, as anything, frankly, that 70-year-olds yeah. requires a bit of dusting down, a bit of checking, and a bit of updating. That's what I highlighted. I actually had an article in The Telegraph yesterday sure. where I said it doesn't go far enough. I think we've absolutely got to lead the way on this on behalf of many, many developing uh, developed countries across Europe. We are all under threat 
because we have got millions and millions of economic migrants, and this is the thrust of her yeah. speech, yeah. who want to come to Europe. And that is unsustainable. And no one has voted for mass immigration. No one has, whether it's lawful or unlawful. Of course, we all want to welcome uh, high quality, high skilled immigration that helps our economy. Think- we always has. Mm. Mm. But, but where, you've got, where you've got the threat to our, literally, uh, to our society, our civic society, to our, our prosperity, to our security, from unlimited numbers, then you are seeing a reaction from the people across Europe and in the United yeah. Kingdom. Do you think she made it clear enough that she does value, though, the contribution of immigrants to this country? Because I can understand that some of her language may have upset people. People don't understand exactly what multiculturalism L- let me tell you, means. I went- so they see that as, you know, an attack on ethnic minorities no, I, in this I think, country. I think, if anything, uh, actually... Many politicians have always praised the contribution yeah. that immigration can make. But let's remember the chair of the Office for Budget Responsibility on, Re- on Radio 4 today, a few months ago, admitted for the first time from a senior official that high levels of low skilled immigration yeah. has done nothing for improving wealth per head in this country. Right. High skilled, high quality, fantastic, low skilled, cheap. Uh, labour from overseas that suits big business, that actually doesn't help our economy, it doesn't help our individuals. And I think we've got to face up to this bit. So my point is, we've got to lead the way, we've got to amend it in a short time frame, we'll say, actually, we're going to lead the way, well, we're out. I'd say, can't we just leave it? We can, because we can't, we, and, because and it we requires... Because we can't amend it, Richard, because there's a hundred and how many other countries are lying And that's why, that's why you have to lead by saying, we're going to set a short deadline, yeah. otherwise we're out. We'll Let's leave. remember, India is not a signatory no. to the UN 51 Convention, yeah. for example, a massive economy, yeah. uh, ma- huge, over a billion people, yeah. growing economy. Uh, there are other ways to do things, yeah. and so, of course, we can be welcoming of genuine asylum seekers that can be sensibly well, absorbed. Now, can I just ask one yeah. question? Because Tony Blair was, was, was criticised yeah. for essentially opening the doors to mass migration. Suella Braverman is there giving a speech complaining about 25 years of high-level immigration. What has the Conservative Party done apart from accelerate it? Uh, they've done exactly that. In fact, in December 19, in their manifesto, again, after many manifestos of promising to bring lawful immigration down to much lower levels, they've actually done exactly the opposite. Mm. They've, they've made it much easier. The supposed skilled worker visa, they reduced the threshold so low that it's essentially open borders, and that's the situation we're seeing. Last year to June 23, we've had record high numbers. 600,000. No, but the gross number arriving in the UK... 1.2 million yeah. people. Those leaving is a much more tenuous number. Watch the figures for the next 12 mm. months. And the student visa number, the student visa system is being completely abused. That's trebled in the last four years. These numbers, we have got mass open border, lawful immigration, and this country has never voted for that. I don't believe the majority of the country wants that. We want sensible controlled yeah. immigration that works for our country, where we've got genuine skill shortages while we train up our own. So, so we're cheering the Home Secretary speech, we all agree it was a good speech, and, although you're saying Richie should have gone further. But is this a genuine attempt to, to, to move the dial before the next general election, or is this about Suella Bradman repositioning herself? If, the, if, as the Tories don't know they're going to lose, I'm the next leader. It could be a bunch of those things. Uh, the Tories are very good at warm words, this sort of thing. We've, we've heard strong words before about controlling the boats, about cutting taxes, about all this stuff. It's whether or not you can turn warm words into action. And I think that's where trust in politics mm. from, all, from both main parties is under real threat because you get the words, but where's the action? Where's the delivery yeah. that works for our people? Oh, you hear from Amnesty and other refugee charities, they say people are on the move. That is just the world that we're in. And any attempts to limit immigration, well, uh, uh, it's very difficult. Do you think in some ways... I, t- I tell you what... In some ways our leaders have given up on trying to control our borders because of the number of people, the sheer number of people who are on the move. The UN 51 Convention was drawn up by Europeans to deal with the post-war crisis yeah. in Europe. Yeah. If you suggest to citizens of Europe and the United Kingdom, there's nothing we can do about it... Anybody's welcome to come in. You are going to have serious problems. Yeah. I think these these charities, some of which do fantastic work, mm. I think they are in serious trouble here, and they do themselves a great disservice 
if they don't recognise the legitimate concerns yeah. of hard-working, tax-paying families and folk up and down I, this country. I agree, and you know the script, Richard. Before they've even put the statement out, you, we absolutely knew what all these rag-bag collection of so-called charities were going to say about Brabham and speech. Um, what do you make of her assertion in that speech, based on figures she got from the Centre for Policy Studies that 780 million migrants are on the move, potentially, the cut are not all going to come here, but potentially converting on Europe. Is that, a, is that an exaggeration? No one can imagine what that number actually means. The point is we know that millions are on the move and we know that tens hundreds of millions, hundreds, tens of millions and we know that hundreds of thousands are coming illegally into Europe and uh, potentially onto the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And this has changed dramatically in the last mm -hmm. three years. What I want people to do is focus, what does this look like in 12, 24, 36 months' time yeah. if this growth continues and no one does anything about it? That's what we've got to talk about and we've got to deal with it. That's why I'm saying it's urgent, you've got to amend it or you've got to make a real, strong, Churchillian-like statement we're out. The problem is yeah. everyone, and people who are against Suella Bravman can leap on that number and say that's absolutely absurd to say 780 well, million say, people could She'll say she move. based it from a very respected think tank yeah. which had crunched the numbers and there are 140 countries linked to this uh, 1951 treaty, so do, do the maths. Yeah. Look, do, do the maths. What we know is this is not tenable and we have to be honest yeah. with everybody if this grows at the same rate or exponentially more, we have got major, major problems mm. and the people will not put up with it. Let's just ask you very briefly, the big political issue for the Tories, well, Labour too, uh, HS2, the Northern Link. Um, I can't think for a second, Richard Tice, they're going to announce this week, we're abandoning the Manchester Link in the week they're about to go to Manchester for the Tory conference, because even the Tories with their <laughs> cat-handed PR... Andrew, I'm be quite flattered, tough. because once again, the Tories are basically uh, taking either fully or partly uh, some of my policies and some of the policies that we've advocated. We've always said at Reform, scrap HS2, yeah. <laughs> it's a disaster. Yeah. Uh, and frankly, in business terms, the first loss is the best loss. Yeah. The least tenable solution is to do what they're suggesting, to run it from a suburb of London no one's heard of to a suburb of Birmingham <laughs> no one's ever heard of. Frankly, scrap the lot, uh, fill it in what you've done, and uh, or otherwise you've got to go through with it. But this is... I mean, the numbers are, near, are approaching nearer 200 billion yeah, as opposed what, to 100 billion. That's what Three. Serious Three. people are talking about this. We can't afford it. We should be spending the money in the north. L Liverpool... Leeds, Manchester, they should be linked. Newcastle, Hull, all of that, across Isn't all that of answer? that. And that would be fantastic for the North. And even Andy Burnham would be happy with that, the, the, the Mayor of Greater Is Andy Manchester. Burnham ever happy, no. bless him? <laughs> but he'd be happier. <laughs> be happier. Richard Tice, always a joy. Thank and you'll you very be, much. you'll be standing in for I'll be in tonight, tonight. 7 o'clock, I look forward to it. I look forward to that, yes. Well, we'll